Welcome back to our channel. Today we're going to talk about something you might have seen countless times while browsing the web, but perhaps you've never really thought about what it's called or how it works. I'm talking about the navbar. In this video, I'll show you how can you use navbars in a div hunt. As my starting point, I have this template right in front of me, but it lacks a navbar. So let's add one. Firstly, I need to go to the settings, then browse plugins and to install a plugin called Hamburger Menu. After you install it, you can go back to the builder and start building navbar structure. With the div hunt, that's pretty simple. All you have to do is go to the elements, go to the wireframes and type in navbar. You'll have the list of all currently available navbars, which are fully responsive. You just need to choose between them. Let's go with this one for this example. All I have to do is click and drag it in my project and it will be automatically added, but it's a bit missed place. Let's put it to the top of our page. And now we have our fully responsive navbar ready to use. Let's go to the live site to see how it works. At the live site, you can notice that our navbar is right at the top, just as we said it. When I start resizing this window, you will notice that at certain point, this navbar here will get this hamburger icon. That means it's responsive. When I click on it, you will see that my menu appears here and this icon turns into an X. When I click again, my menu will be hidden and this icon will be turned back to normal. But when I start scrolling, you will notice that my navbar is sticked to the top of my page. And what if I want to make this navbar follow me as I scroll? To achieve that, I need to go back to the builder and add some additional options. Here I am back in the builder. Now let's select this whole section. Let's go to the position and let's set our position to be sticky. The next part is to set top to be zero pixels. That's because we want our number to be exactly at the top of the window. Now let's go to live site to see what we achieved. You can notice when I start scrolling now that my number is following my scrolling and it's exactly at the top of the window. But you can notice that some of the content is overflowing my navbar and to fix that I again need to go back to the builder and set property of Z index. Let's go with value 999. Now we can go back to the live site to see if that fixed anything. You can notice when I start scrolling that nothing is overflowing my navbar anymore. If this doesn't fix your problem you can just go back to the Z index and increase its value until your problem is fixed. After we added our navbar to our project and set it to be sticky, let's talk about responsiveness. Let me go to this smaller viewport and select my hamburger. When I select it and go to the layers and select this div here, I can go to the settings and you can notice that this tag is the tag that has the transform option of the plugin which we installed at the beginning of the video. When I open it, you'll see some additional options here. First one is menu ID. To explain you this, firstly I'll need to show you what is my menu here. And that will be this div. When I go to the design, you will notice that it's hidden. Let's set it to be visible. And this is my menu. This is basically the tag that appears when I click on the hamburger. How can you determine which tag will be the menu of your hamburger? Well, it's pretty simple. For that, you just need to select the tag, go to the settings and set ID. As you can see on this menu div, I have set ID of menu. That is the exactly same ID I have on my transform option into the hamburger. But let's change it now just to show you how it works. Let's type in something like hamburger menu and let's copy this ID so I don't have to type it twice. Now I need to go to the hamburger, open this transform options and paste this exactly the same ID here. And I have my menu determined to my hamburger. The next one is animation. You will notice a bunch of options in this drop down here. First one is none. You can select this if you don't want to have any animation on your hamburger menu. The next on the list is fade and let's test it out how it works. After I set it, I just need to go to save. And one important thing to mention here, whenever you're changing some styles here, you always need to go and hide your menu before going to live site to test it out. When I start clicking on this icon, you will notice that my menu is appearing and disappearing in this simple fade animation. If you don't like this animation, you can always go back to the builder, back to the settings of a plugin and set some other animation from this list. 
The next on the list of animation is slide. So let's select it and let's go to test it out. Now, when I open and close my menu, it will have this sliding animation. It will slide it down when open, then slide up when it's closed. So that's pretty much it for the slide animation. We can go back to the plugin settings to see what's the next on the list. And it's slide left. When I select it, I'll get this duration field and I need to set it in order for this animation to work. Let's set something like 350 pixels and let's hit save. Also, for this animation, I would need to edit my menu tag a bit. For the beginning, let's make it visible. And now let's set flex column here in order for my items to be placed one under the other. The next step will be to set some gap here. Let's go with 25 pixels. And let's set this whole content to be sticked to the left side. Now we have our structure done, but look at this empty space here. To fix this, let's set some width. Let's go with 40% and that will be enough. Now let's set our menu to be 100% in viewport height. To achieve this, we would need to use calc option. And before we start using that option, we would need to know how high is our navbar menu. To see that, we just need to select or hover over our navbar and under my cursor you can see this 86 number. This means that our navbar is 86 pixels in height. You just need to remember this number and while your menu tag is selected, go to the height option and you just need to put these pixels to this value. Now you just need to start typing calc, open these normal brackets and inside of your brackets you need to type next values. 100 we age, that is how high your viewport is. Then you need to subtract your navbar from that value. And to achieve that, you need to hit space on your keyboard, then type in minus, then again space and height of your navbar. And because we saw how much that is, we just need to type 86 pixels here. Now, after you typed all of this, you can just hit enter and height of your menu will be automatically calculated to be 100% of your viewport height and it will subtract your navbar height. We can now hide this menu here and go back to the live site to test out what we've done now. When I open my menu now, you will notice that it appears from the left to the right. Also, the height of my menu is as my viewports. When I start scrolling here, you will notice that everything follows. That's because my navbar is sticky and my menu is child tag of my navbar, so it will follow. When I go and close my menu, you will notice that it disappears to the left. The next animation on our list here is slide right. It's the same as the slide left, but now we need to put our menu to the right side of our viewport in order for everything to work properly. So let's show our menu for the beginning and let's go to the positioning. Because our menu is absolute, all we have to do is set this left option here to be auto and our right option need to be zero in order for our menu to be sticked to the right side of the viewport. When we set all of this, the next step is to hide this menu and after that we can go back to the live site to see what we achieved. When I go and open my menu now, it will appear from right to left and when I close it, it will disappear to the right. The next on the list is show option. If you're tired from going to your menu tag, setting it to be visible, then editing it and then again setting it to be hidden, in help comes show option. All we have to do is check on this option and your menu will be visible. You can now edit your menu. For example, let's edit this text here to say home page open. And now all I have to do is select my hamburger, then go to the settings here and deselect show option. So this is the basically workaround for all those work like select your menu, make it visible, edit it and make it hidden. The last option on this list is flex on show. And to demonstrate you how this works, I'll need to select my menu from the layers, then go to the design and in this layout panel, I'll have this block option. When I click on it, you will see that my menu is all messed up. That's because my menu is supposed to be flex. Now, when I set it to be flex, you will notice that it works perfectly. Now, let's go back to these options here and let's deselect this flex on show option. What will this do? Well, basically, next time when I want to open my menu, it will be opened as a block. 
And to demonstrate you that, let's hide this menu and go to the live site. When I go and open my menu, you will notice that it's all messed up. That's because it's set to be a block and it's supposed to be flex. Let's go back to the builder and fix this. When situation like this appears, all I need to do is set on this flex on show option. This will basically set my menu to be flexible when opened. And to demonstrate you this again, I'll go back to the live site. And now when I open my menu, it will work properly. After we went through all of those options, let's talk about how can you edit this hamburger animation. All you have to do is go back to the builder and select hamburger. On the right side, you will notice these instances. And let me zoom a bit for you to see better. All of those instances represent one line of this hamburger menu. Let me explain you the structure of these instances. At the beginning, we have this VH active class. This class will be set to our hamburger once it's opened, or in the other words, when our hamburger is active, he will get this class. At the right side, we have this div last child. This is our third line in our hamburger because all of those lines are divs and this div is the last into this hamburger. You can target it by this div last child. The next instance here is div first child and it's the same as for the first instance but now you can target your first line and the third instance here is nth child 2 with this you can target your second div in this hamburger or it's our middle line when we explained all of those instances let's see how can we edit them all i have to do is choose one instance from this list let's go with this one and now all i have to do is make some edits here I'll keep it simple and I'll just edit the background. Let's choose this option here and let's start changing the background color. Don't be afraid by this background here. As soon as you hit save button, it will disappear. Now, let's add the background to be red. And when I hit save, the background here will disappear. Now, let's go back to the live site to see what we've done. When I go and open my menu now, you will notice that while it's open, my first line here becomes red. And when I close it, it goes back to its original color. With these instances, you can make all kinds of edits to your hamburger lines. So you can even make some different animations. You don't have to change background color. You can use transform options. You can use anything you like. So in a nutshell, an hour is like a roadmap for a website. It helps you find your way around and discover the content or information you're interested in quickly and easily. Next time you're on a website, take a moment to notice the navbar at the top and you'll know exactly what it is. I hope that you learned something helpful in this video. I'll be seeing you in another one.